So we're starting with a Divinicel H80 foam core. We've epoxied in our foot strap insert areas, our fin blocks, and our rails. And we've milled out the foot strap and handle grab holes so that we can put our T-fittings in there, our threaded T-fittings for the foot straps and for the handle. Uh, that, those blocks help prevent water intrusion and help prevent the core from being crushed. Uh, we did the same thing on our balsa ones. Our skins on this particular build are going to be a flat toe carbon weave. Uh, it's about a six ounce weave that's backed with a six ounce glass. We infuse these skins uh, on the glass plate, which is why we have a really super shiny finish on them. Uh, if you want to see how we did that, it's the same as video number two, I believe, in our kiteboard build series, in the original series. What I'm doing here is I'm protecting the finished surface from any epoxy squeeze out. Uh, we've done that on previous boards and one time we didn't, we found out that is important. So we're just using a little bit of excess bagging film to protect that. One of the keys to a successful uh, vacuum bag operation is to have your materials pre-cut and ready to go before you mix your resin. Uh, this is not like infusion where we've got all the time in the world once we've mixed that resin the timer started and so by pre-cutting everything uh, you're going to be good to go and prepared uh, once you mix that resin. So what I'm cutting here is the vacuum bag and then a spare piece. We're going to use that piece as release film and in two different ways. One to go under the board and protect the rocker table from getting excess resin and then another over the board to create a barrier between the board itself and the uh, breather which is what I'm cutting right here. By doing that we can reuse that breather on multiple boards that will keep the epoxy squeeze out out of the breather. And the breather really just needs to be a hair bit bigger than the board itself. Could actually be just a little bit longer and not quite as wide. It would also be an option, but I'm going to cut it just a little bit wider here and a little bit longer. So once I have those materials all put off to the side, uh, usually I stack them in reverse order that they're needed. I'm get over to the rocker table and put the sealant tape around it. And the reason I do that again is if we drip any epoxy it's going to land on the paper covering for the sealant tape and get removed and not interfere with us getting a good bond between the rocker table and the sealant tape. Here's that piece of plastic I was saying we're going to put down just to protect the rocker table from any epoxy that might get on it. We've also gone ahead and filled the T-fittings with clay so that they won't get resin in them. And now we're just going to bond the skins on and install the teeth fittings. So install the teeth fittings first and then bond the skins on. We're using epoxy putty here. Uh, we've got another video on how to make epoxy putty for this type of application for bonding or gluing. And we'll put a link uh, to that in the video. Here. I'm using the tooth trowel. Uh, the reason I use the tooth trowel is if you get the epoxy thick enough, and you trowel it with that, those grooves provide a way for air to escape when we put down the skin and press it in place. So we're gonna get this epoxy troweled on here. We're gonna install the T fittings in there and then we'll do one more pass with the trowel to make sure we've got epoxy on the back side of the T fitting as well. We're just gonna drop, like I said, all those T fittings in the place. There's already epoxy in that hole. Uh, and then we're going to take the trowel here and go over it and make sure we've got epoxy over the top. You do want to make sure that you've got epoxy all the way past the edge of the board. You know, this is super key because we're gluing that skin in place and we need a good bond to have the correct strength or to have proper strength in that board. Uh, after laying that skin down, we go over with a J roller just to make sure everything's pressed nice and tight and we'll flip the board over and do the same thing on this side. One thing on this board, uh, the center of this board is a little thicker than boards we've done in the past. Usually we come out uh, around 3 eighths of an inch and this one's closer to a half inch. And that's why there's those transition areas that are kind of a lighter color 
If I was going to do it over again, I would redo the code so it ramped up at an even angle instead of having those transitions. You can kind of see in other areas uh, how that's created a lump. I assume if I break this board, it's probably going to break in that transition area. So I'm lining the board up. Uh, we've got everything glued together and just lining it up in the jig. I've got marks on each side of it uh, to line up with. I'm placing my release film over the top of it and that'll keep any glue squeeze out from getting into the breather. I'm setting the breather and because we're using the 401C cups, you can see that little metal piece right there in the corner. You want to make sure you get those on before you seal up the bag. So we've got release film, breather, the 401C cups, and now we're going to put the bag over the whole thing and seal it up. Also you can't hardly see it, but in this bottom corner I doubled up the breather where that 401C cup goes. That's going to be my vacuum outline and where I usually have my vacuum out I will double up or add a little extra breather to that area so it doesn't smash down and lock itself off. So we're just going to seal that bag up. Uh, not really going to put any pleats in it uh, for a couple of reasons. The board itself is not that thick. Um, so we really don't need to create pleats to go down around it and any bridging that happens shouldn't be an issue as well as the bag's got some stretch to it and so I'm just not really worried about putting any pleats in that bag to get things down. If you've watched our infusion videos we tend to put pleats in, in infusions but they have different requirements that, that require those. In this case not really necessary. So I'm going to come in with a pair of scissors and put a little slit in the 401C cup bases or in the bag uh, over those and then install on one end our vacuum gauge and on the other end our vacuum outline. The reason I put those on opposite ends is I want to know how much vacuum is being pulled through the whole thing and by putting it, that gauge far away from the port I'm not going to get an erroneous reading. Uh, and it, it, one way to test this is to look, if you have a resin trap on your vacuum system, look at the gauge on the resin trap and look on the gauge that's off, you know, away from the port and often that one's going to read a little bit lower, especially if you've got a leak. So we've turned the pump on and it's going to suck down here and pull everything into place and clamp it. In this case we are pulling uh, quite a bit more vacuum than we normally would. Uh, I had to use our oil build pump and that pump likes to run at or near full vacuum uh, in our, instead of our oilless and so we are pulling uh, about 28 there so we're not quite full vacuum. Uh, we let that sit overnight and cure and here we are the next day removing those parts so kind of reverse order. Uh, we're going to remove the top half of our 401Cs, uh, remove the bag and pull the board out. And just working that bag off right there, making sure to not pull my polyethylene uh, rocker table sheet up. And once we get that off, uh, we're looking good. So we've got a sandwich structure now. It's got the rocker in it. When you flip it over, it you know it's got a little bit of flex, which we want, and it's held the rocker and fits right in there. So. Everything's looking good at this point. Those white spots on the bottom, that's some glue that got on the bottom of the board uh, when we flipped it to glue the top on. So that's where glue actually came through the holes for the foot strap inserts. So again, that's a reason why we put that protective sheet on there because otherwise that would have ended up on the bottom of our board. Carbon boards are a little trickier because you can't see through carbon. Uh, so what I've got here is a wood template that once I locate where my handle strap holes are at, I can get that on there and it will tell me where all the rest of my holes are. And so yeah, we can figure out where the handle strap holes are based on the center line markings of the board that we put on, on the rails. Uh, once we've opened those holes up, I'm just going to come through and clean out the clay. I use a bottoming tap uh, to do that and the trick on that is just to real carefully fill under the board and once you fill it, start to bulge a little bit back out. Don't push it too far. 
and now we're going to mark out where the fin blocks are uh, for the fin bolts and so we've got another template and to mark the edge um, so we've got another template we're dropping on and I'm gonna mark all that out with uh, I actually probably didn't need to mark the edge uh, I didn't realize that at this point but when I went to cut it because we've got that epoxy edge and we have foam core uh, outside of that you really just have to run the jigsaw right along that edge and it, it cuts the foam real easy and doesn't cut the epoxy very easily so it kind of has a self guide to, to it. So we're drilling out the fin uh, mounting holes with our little jig that we made the first time and we'll get those all drilled out uh, using a quarter inch drill there um, the six you know the bolts for that are a six millimeter so that gives you a little bit of oversized I went and put some tape around that edge that I marked out because I wanted to you know go and cut and stay outside of that core so that we have that epoxy edge and like I just said um, probably really didn't need to do that because running the grip blade on the jigsaw uh, it runs right along that epoxy edge real nice and doesn't really want to cut into it where it cuts the foam away. Um, so, you know, that was something I did putting that tape on there to, to let me know, you know, where to stay out of. But in the end, I probably really didn't need to do that. So now I take it over to the belt sander. Uh, I'm just going to clean that edge up real quick and, you know, get all the extra foam and any roughness of that cleaned off. And once we've got that done, we're going to do a little bit of wet sanding. Uh, 220 grit wet really seems to give you a nice finish on most composite edges. And we're going to go around that. Uh, I haven't finished this any further, but the 220 leaves you with kind of a matte dull finish. At some point I may actually come back and wet sand that out to 6 or 800 grit and buff it because I think that rail would actually pop if it was nice and shiny. It would look really cool with the green uh, resin and the black carbon. So may do that, may not. Uh, we'll see. Just going to test fit the fin here. Uh, make sure everything's good there. And again, the fins tend to run on a 6 millimeter. Uh, screw and just making sure everything looks good and there is the finished board so a ton of fun building this board board came out super light and it has been a lot of fun to ride